right, welcome to lab three of gravitation based on circular motion. Our table of contents are going to include some physics principles and initial conditions uh, combined with the part one mass black hole, then part two go and crash, and then analysis, some summary questions, and potential error. Uh, first of all, these are our conditions that we found. Uh, black hole is this, and our initial velocities for both part one, or part two and part three are shown as such, which we'll discuss more detail later on. So, our fundamental principles at work here, we have Newton's uh, universal law of gravitation, which we've seen before, uh, which is going to be helpful in determining force on objects, because uh, it's the only force at play. Our F net is a change of momentum over change in time, uh, which is going to be helpful for some coding conversions into ways we can use them to move some objects around. Uh, as for this, this is going to be the primary way we move objects around, so our velocity update and position update formula using the F net, determined based on some gravitational manipulation that we will do in the code. And then, of course, our parallel and perpendicular force is the only new thing we have so far, which this is your centripetal acceleration, which is based on changing the direction of your circular motion, this change on changing the magnitude of your circular motion, which we will also discuss in more detail. So, our initial conditions. Uh, part one, uh, calculating mass of black hole, you can see our parallel force is acting in the way of the orbit, our perpendicular force is acting forward, or, sorry, in inwards towards the black hole, and our force of gravity, which is resultant of the two. As for this one, it's too small in scale to draw all the gravitational forces, but know that Gravitational forces are happening between the black hole, the ship, and the planet in equal and opposite forms, respectively, due to Newton's law of reciprocity. Uh, part one, mass of the black hole. So, we know that we need to manipulate this force of gravity equation some way to get the mass of the black hole, because it's the only, the only equation that it's in. So we have our gra gravitational constant mass of the star, which we can plug in over here, but we need to find this, and we can only do that via coding. We also know that the time between intervals is one day, so 60 times 60 times 24 minutes, which we plug in for there as well. So this is a code that we do as such. Uh, we know that we need to change our uh, given velocity to momentum, because that's the only thing that's going to be able to calculate force. We find delta V and delta P over here. Don't really know why we need delta V. Uh, we use dP over dT to get delta P over delta T as such with this. And then we know their net force is equivalent to that. So now we have our net force of our change of momentum of our moving object. Now we can manipulate net force into plugging it into this equation over here. So our d mag dp is just your magnitude of the p final minus magnitude of p initial. Then we plug it into p hat, which is just our uh, magnitude, of for magnitude of force dividing our force. And we get our parallel force. Then we can use uh, Newton's second law to make that equivalent to force. And then we can use f net is just parallel plus perpendicular, so we F net minus parallel is going to get your perpendicular force, which is right here. And once we plug, uh, the, once we start manipulating the mass of the black hole into being on this side of the equation by multiplying force gravity times radius and dividing by g and mim star, we're able to get this equation to plug in here, which F net will be this, and once plugging that in at each iteration, the equation will provide this, which is the orbiting black hole and each approximate mass at each instant or day that it is being calculated. Once we have all of those values, we can plug it into Excel and average them together to get 9.51E33, which is our average mass of the black hole, which can be seen by this orange line. This is each, this is each input. So part two, don't crash. We use that get calculated mass of the black hole and plug it into here in order to calculate some orbit things. Now these are the given values from the instructions. For the code, we do our change in position is final minus initial. Our r hat is that divided by the magnitude of such, which is right here. Then we use our force of gravity equation for the object, first object, in this case is black hole, the second object, the planet, uh, for the uh, times r hat, which we calculated up here, which gets you your force of black hole on planet. We do the same for the ship on planet using the same exact equation. And adding those two things together, we get the, the force on the planet from uh, force on the planet from the black hole and from the ship. We do the same thing for the ship, for black hole to ship and planet to ship, and we get our two net forces that are going to be impacting movement. So, plugging those net forces into the velocity update formula and then plugging that into the position update formula, we are left with a simulation that provides this movement right here, which you can see we got very close to the black hole, and that is the orbit of the planet, which is the blue line, the purple line of the ship. So, our initial velocity is negative 3.4 E7 and 1.7 E6 meters per second. So, for our summary questions, what does it mean? Net force and its corresponding parallel and perpendicular force components are far different from change in momentum over change in times parallel and perpendicular forces. F net and dPdt are equivalent values, but not technically the same thing. Perpendicular component of net force is just F net minus its parallel components. While there is no value to perpendicular change in momentum, since the formula doesn't have momentum in it. See, there's no momentum involved here. As for here, it is heavily involved. It's quite confusing, but it will make sense upon using it frequently. So, uh, for part two, uh, possible initial velocity to get in orbit is negative 1.5 e6 and 8 e6 in the y direction and this in the x direction to get a mostly circular orbit around the black hole pretty similar to the plan uh, as such there is the orbit those initial velocities so that's part two thank you so much for watching and uh, have a nice day